Okay, happy Sabbath. It's happy to see everybody. Hope everybody had a good week, especially those that are joining us and everybody here. Uh, we are continuing our study on the Three Angels message. Um, but before we get started, do we have any testimonies, any prayers? I have a testimony. Yes. Um, I got my taxes done. I was a bit apprehensive about it based upon some things I did last year. Nothing illegal. <laughs> <laughs> and I prayed to the Lord to, um, to do my taxes for me. I asked him to do my taxes for me. And <laughs> um, I had a, I, I know I would have to pay, but I had a number in mind, especially after when I spoke to um, a friend and she said that they were going to impose penalties on me. And the number I had in my mind that I would have to pay when I was finished with my taxes, it wasn't even one tenth of that. Oh, so wow. I praise the Lord for that. Um, that he is my tax shelter. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's great. Um, I, I guess um, I'll share uh, something yeah. that happened to me yesterday. I was helping a friend. Um, she was trying to gather some things out of her storage and things had been kind of tossed in there more than um, set in there. And we were trying to get to some things. And then all of a sudden, a whole pile of things just fell over on top of me on my back. And it, it hurt quite a bit, but <clears throat> I just praise God. I wasn't really injured. And uh, I'm very thankful. I'm very thankful. The older I get, the more those things um, become serious. Mm. Very true. But you're not old enough yet, apparently. So you not know, yet. That's right, Carl. Not yet. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I want to thank the Lord for traveling mercies. I was uh, turning left on Northampton to to head home after a short little jaunt to the beach, and uh, you know you do your customary look left, right, look look left, look right, look left again. Mm -hmm. And I did the look left initially, look right, then look left again. And the car there was a car that was a lot closer than I anticipated it being, but. I praise the Lord that the accelerator worked and I was able to make that left turn and and get my family safely. It really kind of kind of, you know, got to me a little bit. So, but I just praise the Lord's name and I'm thankful that holy angels were are watching over us and that we're here to um come together and yeah. uh, continue on our lives. You know, that that's not that doesn't necessarily happen all the time. Sometimes people get into accidents and so I'm thankful. Yeah. Uh, for that uh, time. Okay. Um, Marlon, would you like to do opening prayer for us? I'd love to, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Uh, dear Father in heaven, we thank you that we could gather together today to um, to celebrate the Sabbath and to delve into your word. We thank you uh, for uh, all the blessings that you've provided us with during the week. And uh, we ask that you continue to bless us as we go into this Sabbath day so that we may properly share the messages that you have in, in, the, in your word for us and for the rest of the world. And when we, we, ah, and we may be a light to all those listening. Uh, Thank you for your love, and we uh, praise your name. Your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. So we're going to start lesson three, the everlasting gospel. And so we're going to continue through our book of Revelation. Uh, can I have a volunteer who would like to read Revelation chapter one, verses one through three? I'll take that. Okay. And then who would like to read Revelation chapter 14, verse six? I'll read that. All right. Uh, revelation 1, 1 through 3, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must short, shortly come to pass. And he signed, he sent and si signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in therein for the time is at hand. Amen. Amen. And Revelation chapter 14, verse six. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people. 
Uh, so the question is, how do these verses together tell us about not just the book of Revelation, but about the everlasting gospel as well? It's a, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a message for the world. Uh, it's not a, it's not a, a we, <laughs> excuse me it's not something that uh as the israelites did back in the day it was you they held it to themselves and uh they didn't they didn't do a good job of sharing it um at all and they and they they locked it up and 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 in and in doing so they they themselves even barely barely remembered what it was um so it's something that we have to it's a blessing that we have to live and that we also have to share with the world so that they can also uh, live and, and come to the knowledge of Christ. Amen. And I think also um, the fact that revelation is, is a revelation of Jesus Christ to the world where it should have been known from day one. Um, the everlasting gospel. I mean, the gospel was prepared long before our world was even created. And the people that were entrusted with this knowledge refused to share it. And mm -hmm. so it's terribly sad that as we get to looking through these times of um, the cycles of history and life and so on, that that there needed to be this incredible revelation of Jesus Christ and who he was and is. But the fact that the revelation of Christ is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. I think also, um, since this book is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the gospel is also Jesus Christ. Um, it's the everlasting it's eternal which mean it has no beginning no end and only jesus christ has that so it's the everlasting gospel is the revelation of jesus christ also and um the world has lost sight of him the world has lost sight of him that's why we need people who still have that knowledge need to refocus people's vision upon Jesus Christ. That's why we are charged to, through the angel to tell everyone about this good news that is Jesus Christ. So, so what you're saying is that this, you're equating this revelation of Jesus Christ to, 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 the, to the gospel in terms of make Christ has to be the center. Christ has to be what comes out of the gospel. Right. Christ is the gospel. Christ is, is the gospels. Okay. Yeah. And it's supposed to go to every what nation, tongue, tribe, and people. And so we have to be to do that. That means we have to be organized in doing that. And and our message needs to be going around the world. Mm -hmm. Now the book of Revelation has a lot of things in it, and uh, I want to have this uh, discussion. It's at the kind of at the bottom. He goes, there's a lot of things in Revelation. There's a real, you know, Revelation has beasts, has trumpets, right? Has plagues. There's a lot of things in the book of Revelation. Mm -hmm. um, and this is a good question. So how can we learn to balance out some of the other things that are in the book of the Revelation with uh, the revelation of Christ and his death on the cross for us? So the book of Revelation has a lot of other things. But it starts off with the revelation of Christ. How do we balance some of the other things that are in um, the book of Revelation with um, the revelation of Christ? And we can go on the mark of the beast, you know, all these other things. So how do we keep that in? How do we keep that in, in focus? Well, I think um, the other things are showing you Jesus Christ in different arenas you know, what he's doing in different arenas. Um, in some things, it talks about what he's doing in the church. In other places, it tells you what he's doing in the political arena, how he is working there and um, things he have proclaimed that will come to pass politically, how he has worked there. 
how he has worked in our social lives. You know, so I think it's him being revealed in every aspect of our lives. So I think in everything that we do, we look for Christ. Mm. You know, and he revealed, he revealed himself so that even when um, things look hopeless, like during the dark ages, we know that it didn't come upon him in surprise. He had said, this will happen, but I'm still here and I will still have people who are faithful to me, you know, so that when we are faced with anything, we know that Christ has promised to his faithful people, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Mm. So I think in everything we look for Jesus Christ. Okay. Anyone else? I, uh... S similar to what Ms. Nelson was saying, I feel like we should uh, uh, look at it th through the lens of Jesus. Uh, mm. So, so you see the beasts, um, and you know people are afraid of the beasts. But you know, if you're reading the Word of Jesus and you see that the beasts are just nations, then they're not scary because it's just a symbol. Uh, if you see the mark of the beast, um, but you're looking at it through the lens of Jesus, you see the seal of Jesus, the seal of God on his people. So, you know, what does the mark of the beast mean to you? And if you and if you're aware of uh of who Jesus is, then the things that are commonly fearful uh in the other passage in the in the passages of of Revelation or Daniel or or in life won't be as scary because you know that you have Jesus who uh who is faithful true and stronger than anything that could come uh come against you hmm. Hmm. so I have a question so then why is it that if someone and this is what I've seen sometimes it's sometimes it's easier to get people to come to a talk if it's going to be based on okay we're going to go into a deeper understanding of the plagues Mm -hmm. We're going to go into a deeper understanding of the beast versus, okay, let's talk about what Christ has done for us on the cross. So what, what, like, what, what's going on there? We like the excitement and the sensationalism, you know, because that's why horror movies sell. <laughs> you know, you hear about the beast, you hear about the plagues, you... People, people come for that thrill in learning about that and listening to that. And some people come for it also thinking, well, maybe it's going to give them a clue to what's happening in the future, mm -hmm. right? It's like a, um, a crystal ball to the future. Mm -hmm. When they realize that it's not a crystal ball really to the future, it's a, it's a, it's a call to come to Jesus and to know that he has defeated all these things already for you. And you should turn from where you are and accept him. Some people are glad to do that and some are not. Mm. I was listening to, uh, go ahead, Sister Lynette. No, I was just going to say, um, I, I think whenever we're studying, you know, Revelation is a, a book that's, um, um, most people come at it as seeing it as being very difficult to understand, mm -hmm. you know, with all the symbols and everything. But I think we always have to keep our focus on the fact that it's all about Jesus coming to, he came, he died to redeem man um, so that we will not perish, but that we will have eternal life. Because without him, we're, we're just destined to perish. And I think that's what we have to always keep in mind, keep our focus mm. on him um, right. throughout the study. But I think sometimes when you're studying like uh, Revelation, it can become like a very academic type study oh, for versus, sure. really, versus really an intimate study of learning more about Christ. So. Yes. Yeah. Because it says it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's how the book starts. That's how the book starts. Right. That's the title. Right. It's right. the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I, and I guess I say that because how, how is it if, if I guess I'll say it another way, how can we preach this eternal gospel if we're not excited about it ourselves? If it's more exciting to 
talk about, like you said, the plagues or the beast or the, you know, the mark of the beast or what have you, you know, how can we, how can we share it if we're not excited about it, you know, you know, and I think part of, part of it is, are we being revealed, is the gospel being revealed to us freshly anew, right? Is there a start, is there, is, are we, are we continuing to be, is Christ continuing to reveal himself to us? Or do you think he just reveals himself to us one time and he stops? No, I think it's a continual revelation, right? We can always continue to grow in our experience with Christ. And like you said, Sister Lynette, I think as we read Revelation, as we study these books over again, I think the focus, like you said, the academic, I mean, there's a there's a there's a place for trying to understand historically what's going on. But I think the the primary focus should be, Jesus, what are you trying to show me about yourself through here? What am I supposed to learn more about the cross through here? What am I supposed to learn more about your atoning sacrifice and how this relates to me uh, versus, you know, like you said, just knowing the facts to know the facts. Because the thing is, just 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 knowing what the mark of the beast is won't save you. Right. Yeah. It can warn you, but it won't save you. Yeah. And the relationship with Jesus Christ is what saves. Yeah. Because even because even even not even not knowing what the mark of the beast is, you can be saved. Uh, right. Because if if your eyes and your mind are, are stayed on Christ, then what does the mark of the beast matter? You know, because if you if you uh, it's like the old 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 saying. Oh, well, that's not a saying, but uh, <laughs> they uh, they they say that uh, the people in um, the Federal Reserve who trained for years to find counterfeit dollar bills and money and that kind of thing don't study any of the counterfeits they study the real thing. If you're studying the real thing, the counterfeits are plainly obvious because you know what you're, what's supposed to be where and what's, you know, you, you have a relationship with the real thing. Mm. So if you, if you grow your relationship with the real thing, then, then the imitations won't, won't matter to you at all because you know, you know, what's real and what's not. Right. So, I, so I'm presenting all these other things. I think like uh, what, what I'm hearing is that we need to create, cre we, can, we should share these things what we've learned in revelation with other people about the beast and about the Whoa. plague and about we should we should not withhold those things but christ has to be the center i think that's the thing right we don't want to get run away with <laughs> the excitement of hey i figured this out i remember i was sitting at church one time at potluck this is 20 years ago he goes well i figured out where the tiger where the euphrates is and i figured out all this other stuff and you know, it just kind of struck me as like, man, how, how do you know all this stuff for sure? Are you, you know, you, you know, so I think there's a, there's a general fascination sometimes with, with the knowing of these things, which again, I'm not trying to say it's a bad thing to know these other things in Revelation, but the, the most exciting thing should be about what Christ has done for you, right? Yeah. And what Christ is revealing in the book of Revelation. And like you said, <laughs> knowing, knowing Christ and knowing, okay, there's a mark of the beast, which we know is a counterfeit, but I've come to know the Lord in the, in the Sabbath day and grown in him. Those are the experiences that we need to know. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other one is a warning so we can share with other people, but it's supposed to help people to come to a deeper experience of who Christ really is, right. not just another piece of information, right. you know? Exactly. Um, okay, there's, there's, I think is, there, is important for us to realize is that the book of Revelation, um, in, in trying to explain things to people, and, you know, there's, like we said, I mean, there's monsters, and there's flying angels, and there's, um, you know, just so many things that uh, we look at it, and people who might glance over the Revelations look at it and go, that is just, it's too bizarre. It just doesn't mm -hmm. make any sense. But what we're looking at is John the apostle who wrote down the revelation as it was given to him. And then we have the book of Daniel and the book of Daniel was written centuries earlier mm -hmm. and how the two coincide, how they go together. The mm -hmm. one explains the other. Right. And so I think that, you know, when people are trying to understand all these symbols and things that they can't get, there are some real basic things that mm -hmm. we can share with them that would help them realize um, right. that that it sounds like they're far and fantastic and so on, but but really they're not. They're just mm -hmm. words that are used to describe nations and different things. Mm -hmm. So 
that's yeah. my okay so we're going to move on to monday's lesson and of course you know uh revelation 14 6 the author of the lesson brings up it, it uh, begins with eternal or everlasting mm -hmm. and so that lets you know that this is a lot deeper and broader than what we can understand can i have a volunteer who would like to read uh first corinthians chapter 15 verses one through four i'd like to okay who would like to read romans chapter 3 verses 24 through 26 I'll read that. And then who would like to read Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8? I'll read that. All right. First yeah. Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Uh, moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory that I, what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Mm. Okay, and then Romans 3, um, and if you don't mind, can I start at a little bit ahead of that, um, in verse 20, 22, the end of it. For yeah, there is fine. no difference... For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God, being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God set forth as a propitiation by his blood through faith to demonstrate his righteousness, because in his forbearance, God had passed over the sins that were previously committed and to demonstrate at the present time his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of the one who has faith in Jesus. Mm. Okay. Romans chapter five. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, and Romans 5, uh, verses 6 through 8. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die. Yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Mm. So, so how is the everlasting gospel presented here in these texts? And what great hope is presented here for us? It is right, just a second. Hold on just a second. What was the question again? <laughs> no, it was like, there's I'll two questions. Right How is the everlasting gospel presented in these texts? And what great hope is presented here for us? Uh you know, you you have that you have that hope that uh the hope of the fact that this is uh, a plan laid before the problem was made. Ooh, I like mm. that. You can keep that if you want to. I just invented it. Okay. A plan laid before the problem was made. So, yeah. so 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 you don't have to worry that um coming coming forth uh uh in front of you or um there there will be something that catches the Lord off guard as far as as far as being able to save you. Uh, he's already mm. he's already done the work to save you past, present, uh, and future, and uh, and you can trust in that. Um, you know, if if the uh, the uh, the sacrifice of Christ hadn't gone past and present and future, then nobody prior to Christ would have been able to be saved, and then mm. the the world could have would have just ended with Adam and Eve. Um, but because of the grace of God, because of that sacrifice, uh, you know, life continues and uh, righteousness can continue to uh, abound in, in, in the lives of, of those who, who, who choose to, to follow through faith. Mm. Yeah. So any, any other thoughts? I like the way the lesson highlights it. It says here, he was rejected so that we could be accepted. He died yeah. the death that was ours yeah. so we could live the life that was his. Mm. I really like that. 
Yeah. That's mm, true. You know, what always stands out and to me is that. Christ, nothing is possible. It's true. Nothing is and possible. It's, it's, it truly is, like Marlon said, the everlasting gospel, because it's everlasting good news to those that believe it. You know, I always say, you know, why, because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Why we were drug, why we were still using drugs, why we were just acting. Can you, can you imagine? Can you imagine what the angels must have been thinking? Looking at the world at that time. And there's no hope. Yeah. What's this, I mean, you're like, I mean, you have to wonder if some people were, if, 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 if it was me, I'm like, what's, what's he doing for these people? You know? Yeah. You know, well, I, not to mention before, before not to mention you know, day and then our yeah, day. Yeah. Yeah. For, so right. for these, for these people, you're going to, yeah. 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 So and I think that's why the cross is, is still a mystery. It's a mystery yeah. in the sense of how, how can, how can, of uh, being so perfect, love those that are so imperfect, mm. you know, and it's not like Christ, and it's not like when Christ died, you had this revolution that happened, right? When Christ died, he died on the cross, kind of nondescript. There was what, 120 people that maybe believed in him, 12 yeah. disciples, you know, which, who, who all ran away, yeah, you know, and that was it. And then all of a sudden, from that, he's resurrected, which is which is very important, huh? Then the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, then the Holy yes. Spirit comes and the world has changed. Yeah. Forever. Um, but it's just to me, it, it's it's amazing that hope that we can have, just even personally, that you know, when we when but if we have faith in Christ and we hold on to his word, we'll, we'll be saved. Mm -hmm. You know, that's amazing. That faith that and that and the thing is that 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 uh is extended to those today anyone that you know that's hearing or anybody that comes in contact that hope is given today and people's lives are being transformed every day every sometimes day. we don't realize that people's lives are being transformed every day by Jesus Christ every people are every day are accepting Jesus Christ yeah that's amazing mm -hmm. that's amazing and that's part of the everlasting gospel okay I like that last uh, paragraph of, of Monday's lesson. I didn't know if you were going to move on to Tuesday. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Monday, um, and it, it, this plan has had been put in place even before the beginning of time. And then mm. when you look at these texts, like 2 Timothy and Titus and Ephesians, and there's others, uh, Romans 16, and I was really enjoying looking up some of those things. And to think that all of this, God knew beforehand. He knew everything, mm. every single bit of it. He knew what Lucifer was going to do. He knew how all of it was going to go. And the Bible tells us that for the joy set before him, all mm. of it was put into place before time even began on this earth. And mm. I just, I love knowing that, that, he, the Lord knows each and every single one of us, and He knows all the 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 hairs on our head. He knows everything about us, and He knew exactly what was going to take place. He knew the suffering He was going to have to endure, but He did it for love. And I, I just to think of this plan of salvation since before time began. Mm. People need to hear that and they need to realize that none of this takes the Lord by surprise. Mm -hmm. None of it, and all the badness that there is in this world, um, it, it's all foretold in God's word. He's written mm -hmm. it down so that we can know it and we can understand it. And mm -hmm. people who, who don't even have, you know, years of, of studying and that they can pick up the word and with the prayer of God help me to understand it. They can learn that God did this for them personally, mm. as if they were the only one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's I not like you know. Go ahead, Heather. I like how Mary Lou um, referenced God's love because I think that is the um, propelling force behind the everlasting gospel. Because God mm. is love, and I think because of His love, 
you know, and love tends to be a pretty cheap word due to um, Hollywood, mm -hmm. but his um, perfect love formulated this plan. Well, I wouldn't say formulated because I can't understand it because I can't understand eternity and everlasting being finite as I am. Mm -hmm. But this plan lived within God before anything was created. Mm. And um, he had this plan to save the people, to save anyone that he could, any creature of his that will make a, a wrong choice. And um, it's to save people who have gone astray. And I think we need to keep that in mind because it's not a plan to make us happy and live forever. It's a plan to save people who have gone astray and to, um, to partake of the plan, you have to come back from the path from which you've strayed. Mm. So, and because people think, Jesus died on the cross so that I wouldn't have to die, mm. you know, and that's all well and good. He died from, he died for us because he loves us and that's all well and good, but that's not mm. the end of it. The everlast, this, this everlasting gospel, this message is to bring sinners back from the path of destruction. Mm. So it's not just to make you happy. No. You know, you still need to come back from the path of destruction because knowing the everlasting gospel, acknowledging the everlasting gospel and still continuing on the path on which you're on will lead to everlasting death still. Mm. You know, it's, we have to remind people that it's to save sinners. Yeah. Of which I am one. That's true. And um unless I let the Lord give me a new heart, change the sinful me into someone who look more like Jesus Christ through working with me daily, then this everlasting gospel has done nothing for me. Hmm. You know, what's interesting, yes. Heather, Heather, and I know we've talked, so go ahead, Sister Lynette, go ahead. <laughs> no, I was just thinking, as Sister Heather was talking, I was thinking, um, I had heard a pastor say recently that, um, Christ didn't come or die to um, change his word. He came to change my heart. Amen. And I, that is really our problem. Sin is the problem. And so mm -hmm. Jesus came so that our hearts would be changed. Mm -hmm. But he has not changed. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Mm. You know, it's interesting because up until this... Um, Heather, it's something you said that got made me think in terms of, I think it's with the everlasting gospel too, is that not only does God save us, but then he helped, he, not only does God save us, he makes us part of his plan to be part of that gospel and spreading the good news. I'm pretty sure the lesson will get into this later in later weeks, but um, it is, it is, it's amazing how that, like you said, I can go, you go, you're going one direction you realize the love of God, the love that God has for you. And then he, through his Holy Spirit, puts a love for you, love for other people in your heart and mind. And you want them to know about the good news of Jesus Christ, right? That that has to happen. I still remember, I was, there's this, one of my favorite songs. It says, you know, you know, if you, if you gladly chose surrender, so will I. And um, I think that that's the thing. When we, when we start, when we fall in love with Jesus, we're willing to let him lead us in our lives and that's but that's that's the good news that the the good news really is good news the good news isn't just we're just giving these irresponsible people a million dollars and they can live forever the good news is the love of christ can transform not only can it save yeah it can save you from the penalty but it can transform you yeah. you know and that transformation will cause you to therefore continue to to spread that message like the baton you know like the the hall of faith we call it you see the baton, the cloud of witnesses that continue this message. And, you know, I do believe our lives are being written down. Our testimonies are being written down um, to be an encouragement as well. Mm. So it's a, it's a blessing. Okay. We're going to go on to Tuesday's lesson. It says a story of grace. So who would like to read Revelation chapter 13, verse 8? I'll take that. 
Okay, and then who would like to read First Peter chapter one, verses eighteen through twenty? I'll take it. Okay. Thirteen eight, the Revelation, uh, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose name whose names are not written in the book of life uh, of the Lamb, saying from the foundation of the world. Mm. And First Peter 1, 18 to 20, um, and again, I'm going to start at 17. If you call on the Father, who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. Wow, that's a blessing. Mm -hmm. I touched upon this a little bit earlier, but we'll ask, what do these verses teach us about the plan of salvation? You guys touched upon this earlier as we were going through the lesson. Yeah. I think one thing we have to see here in, in these last few verses about the plan of salvation is that um, based upon what Marlon read in Revelation 13, verse 8, um, there, there, is, there is another being out there who mm. doesn't want us to be saved. He mm. doesn't want us to take hold of the grace that the plan of salvation gives. So he is going to do everything in his power to keep you distracted from accepting it. Even though Christ, um, God, has formulated this plan before the foundations of the world, um, and he shed his blood, did everything he can to ransom us from sin, sin is still out there. And the author of sin is trying to get as many people to turn away, to be distracted from this gift as possible so that even though god is offering us grace he is going to tell us we don't need it or he is going to distort the, the plan in such a way that um we think we have it you know we're going to have these sweet soft words um where um you know some people say all you have to do is to believe and they say, I believe, and they think they're set. Mm -hmm. You know, so he is trying to get us distracted from this great big sacrifice that Christ did for us. Mm. You know, I like, uh, go ahead, Sister Lynette. <laughs> I like how um, <clears throat> First Peter um, um, 1 18 highlights um, how we aren't redeemed by um, tradition or an empty manner of life. Mm. I really like that because, mm. you know, we could think that we're saved or redeemed by, you know, going to church and keeping all of these traditions and all of these other things, but it's Christ. It's mm. all about Christ. Mm -hmm. I just like how that's highlighted, um, you know, because sometimes you can have traditions. I think it highlights here about the tradition from your fathers. You know, that's what things that are just passed on and passed on. You can get caught up in tradition, uh, tradition and think that means something. You know, I've always been this or I've always done that. Yeah. But it's mm -hmm. all about mm -hmm. Christ. It's all mm -hmm. about Christ. And, and one thing I am um, in First Peter 1, chapter 18. I think we all need to be aware. It says, knowing that, well, my version says, knowing that you will ransom. Yes. So I think we have to remember that we are hostages. We are mm. hostages of sin. Mm. And this everlasting gospel is trying to free us. I like That's that true. word. You know, and some of us develop Stockholm syndrome 
Uh, yeah, it's true. Cling, cling that's to true. our um, and so so we have to be very careful and make sure that you know we are ransomed. You don't sit there. You have to be ransomed from sin. We should explain yep. the Stockholm syndrome so people who are watching can understand, Heather. Yes. Um, Stockholm syndrome is where sometimes people who have been kidnapped or held hostage against their um, will, they develop an affinity for their, um, what do you call them? Captors. Captors. The captors. captors yeah. yeah. They develop an affinity for your captor and yeah. start siding with them. Yeah. Um, I think mm -hmm. Marilyn, um, what's her name? Marilyn Manson was one of those who developed Stockholm syndrome with her, with her captors and went out rubbing and killing with them. Oh, oh Patty, Patty Duke. Patty, Patty Duke, yeah. Yeah, Patty, Patty, Patty Duke. Duke. Yeah, Patty Duke. Not, yeah, she started not, robbing. Not Patty whatever. Duke, Patty Hurst. 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 Okay. Patty yes, Duke Patty is a singer. Aren't we? Yeah, funny. Marilyn Manson is. So funny. Yeah, this we is, is so being recorded. Yeah, we need to be yeah. angry. Well, okay. you know, but it, but but the point, the, but the, that's an important point, Heather. Because okay, if you're in a hostage situation and you're ransomed, and they say, okay, you're free to go, well, are you just gonna mingle? Do, or do you do you you know? And that's what we do sometimes. Are we just gonna mingle? Just take our time? No, you're gonna get no, up and you're gonna run. Well, this this captor is very subtle. Mm. He's telling people it's better here than there. Yes. You know, where you are is better because if you go and you accept this um, price that Christ has paid for you, mm -hmm. he will want you to change. You can't eat what you want to eat. It's no fun. You have to go to church. You have to keep the Sabbath holy. All these laws, they are legalistic. Um, so he, he will do that. Mm. And what I have realized also, um, with the everlasting gospel is um, <laughs> churches have started to dumb down the everlasting gospel. You know, we don't, uh, um, recently at church, we had someone tell a story and draw an illustration between three dictionaries where the word sin has been removed from the Oxford dictionary, Oxford English dictionary, mm -hmm. right? And sin, you know, we were all amazed. Oh, wow, what is this world coming to? But it's that way because of us, we church people. We don't use the word sin anymore. We are afraid to tell people you're wrong. What you're doing isn't mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. um, that's not the way to do things because um, I heard some people say, someone said, Oh, don't tell them they're wrong. That is so hard. That is so harsh. Um, you could tell them there's a different way to do this. Mm. Or maybe you should try it this way. You know, we have mm. this gentle parenting going on now. Now we have this gentle worshiping. And mm -hmm. it's it has dumbed down the ever everlasting gospel to a point where we don't talk about sin anymore. We don't talk about sin and you're going to hell. You're going to burn. <laughs> so. <laughs> We don't mention those things because it's too harsh. Everything has to be mm. politically correct and nice and sweet and soft. Mm. But the problem with that is the everlasting gospel that we are talking about, love and being kind and changing, is the same thing the world is teaching us now. That's right. We all oh, be kind, be gentle, mm. um, be accepting of everybody because Jesus is. I just saw that on TV recently. Mm. Be accepting of but everybody. It's a, but it's a counterfeit. Right. Yes. It's a counterfeit. So yes, we right. have we have dumbed down the everlasting gospel so much that the message the world is giving right now, it's very similar. Right. It's, it's, a, it's a counterfeit. So it's easier for people to want to embrace the world than to than to um stay in church. Mm -hmm. because our messages are similar but yeah. and that's what we have to remind people of when, mm. like we read in first peter 18 we are captives we are yeah. captives you are a prisoner of a liar the father of lies and he is going to be destroyed he is going to burn he is going to be never more and everyone who is with him is going to burn they're going to die 
And he isn't trying to make anything good for you. His whole aim is to destroy everything that Jesus created. Mm. But God in his love, his infinite love for us, for all mankind, not willing that anybody should die, should perish, should burn, stepped down from eternity to earth, became one of us, steeped into this world, steeped in sin and mm. died. Mm. You know, it's not just the cross. It's not, it's what happened that led to the cross and what will happen yeah. after the cross. But you so, know, Heather, ahead, I would I'm, say, I'm done. <laughs> no, I would say, I, I would say that, you know, one, it's a counterfeit. I'll make a point because one, it's a counterfeit because it's saying, well, I can be, I, I, I can be transformed without actually having the, without knowing the transformer. Okay. That's, that's one counterfeit. The other one is, I do think that people sense that something is wrong. Okay. I do think that in their lives, they sense that something is wrong and that something is missing and that there is, that I need something. But like the children of Israel, um, they forget that it is, a, here's the thing, it is a plan of salvation. So the thing is, you have to accept God's plan and learn to trust in him. I think some people feel like it's just God's just God just wants to change our circumstance. He wants to change our character to the point to where no matter where we are in any circumstance, it doesn't matter. We can we can learn to overcome circumstances, but you know, that's a different for a topic. But I, I do think that when we talk about being redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you know, this is a this is a serious situation. Think about it. The 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 creator of the universe came and died for you. So how how much danger must you be in if he's going to do that? Right. Well, a lot of things. And think about too the fact that if if you don't realize that you're a sinner, if you're not told that the reason Christ died is because of your sin, but but you can be a participant in a church and as long as you show up on your given day of worship and you you're there. Um, you don't have to change anything. You don't have to do anything other than what you're normally doing. You know, mm. you, you're told you can, you uh, don't tell lies and you don't steal and you don't commit adultery and all those things. But there are so many other ways that people are sinning against God, but they're not taught about those things. And so I think the reason we have got to be on top of sharing the everlasting gospel is to let people understand why Christ had to die for their sins. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. I mean, if it was so simple that all you have to do is go to church and just, you know, keep the 10 commandments, like it says, and, and you don't do anything, anything that you can check off your list and everything is fine. Um, the truth of the matter is, is it's far more serious than that. Mm -hmm. you know, it really is. And, and I think people are truly being lulled into thinking that, that they're, the gospel is really, it's nothing. It's just, you know, it's just go to church. That's all. That's all mm -hmm. God wants. Just, just show up and go to church and give your money and that's it. Well, and I think that's, that's something that we have to realize that that's, that's a, that's a personal thing that we're going to have to deal with and answer to, because um, we can, you know, like James says, if you know what is good, and you don't do it, then that is sin. That and is that, sin. Is the, that, that is the sin of the church. We know yeah. what is good, but yeah. we're not doing it. So think, where do we stand? Where somebody that may be outside, yeah, they know what they're doing is wrong versus we know what's right, but we're not doing it. And it could be deception on both ways. Yes, Brother yeah. Marlon. I was gonna say I think that's one of the one of the one of the bigger one of the bigger problems too, because you know, even though uh the devil enjoys it when he gets uh people to believe a lie uh he's even more excited when he uh gets the people to hate the truth um mm. so so you have to so you know the 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 there's and and it's and it's and it's 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 easy for him to get him to, to, to do that by the way he's able to maneuver himself throughout the people in the church and then say hey look at this guy you're better than him you know mm. you, you've done you've done more good things here and there you know what you're doing is fine because look at this guy he was in this position in the church you know martin luther was a, a an anti-semite 
you know, you're better than Martin Luther, uh, you know? <laughs> so, so there's, there's, there's so much, uh, but, and then that's the thing. There's so much wrong with people that, that, that we, if we fall into this trap of looking at each other, looking at the people, mm. any, any other person, then we can, we can find, uh, uh, salvation in ourselves by by how much That's better we point. are than them yes but but then that the thing is we're not supposed to be looking at each other yep. we're supposed to be looking at Jesus amen, amen. you amen. know he uh, I'm trying <laughs> not to go into a secret sermon I've been writing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so so we so we have to so we we have to we have to make sure that we're we're we're, we're we're getting our fire <laughs> okay <laughs> from the holy spirit I, i'm going through a little bit so so there's there's a, there's hot and there's cold and there's lukewarm and you know i to for for you to stay hot you have to continually have that energy source otherwise you're just going to cool off and you have to keep, and you can't get that energy source from the things around you because that those things around you, you're all going to be the same temperature. You're going to be lukewarm. So you have to keep your eyes on the, the Jesus that, that saves you because his fire is the only one that can keep you hot. And if everybody's mm. keeping their eyes on him, they'll stay hot. And if you're cold, you're real receptive, real receptive to that new energy. So that energy can get into you. You'll raise your temperature even faster. Boom. You're not you you know you know that you got your heat you got your fire so keep your eyes on jesus everybody that's all amen. Amen. amen 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 that's good this, amen. This, goes, this goes into wednesday who would like to read revelation chapter 14 verse 6 i'll do that again okay. yeah. yeah again it's yeah, he, he's trying to deepen the impression <laughs> <laughs> we're happy to <laughs> and i saw another angel in the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth to every nation and kindred and tongue and people mm, okay now this kind of talks about we're kind of talking about this on tuesday now this goes into let's read matthew chapter matthew chapter 28 verses 19 we're talking about the church and our responsibility about the gospel and the grace who would like to read matthew chapter 28 verses 19 and 20 Actually, you can start with 18. I can I'm do that. Okay. Okay. okay, go ahead, Mary Lou. Okay, all right. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Mm. So, we, so we see Jesus right there that if you've accepted his gospel, if you accepted the call, if you accepted his grace, then he says, you need to go and preach the, preach the message. Yeah. Not everyone is called to go, like go. No, no, no. no but I'll say but this, but everybody's called to Go to next teach. door, maybe. Yeah, everybody, everybody's called to share. Yeah. Share, share the message. Yeah. Doesn't mean you have to share it preaching. Doesn't mean you have to go into the mission field. You're wear off. I think the thing is we have to start in our homes. Mm -hmm. And Thursday we'll talk about that a little yeah. bit more. I think Samuel, when people hear that, they think, well, you know, I've I've not received a call that I have to go to Africa or I have to go to India or um, some continent that that I don't I wasn't born on. But mm. no, the going is to go outside our. I think ourself just go oh, outside. Yeah. Well, outside of ourselves. Yeah. Well, you know, and, and, and Thursday's lesson talks about there's different stages, right? There's different areas. I think, you know, we have to be willing to share. And this is part of that three angels message. We have to be willing to share the, share, share the gospel. And it's not so much because God needs us. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm not one that believes God, God needs me to share the gospel because he, you know, there's angels that could do that. He can get rocks to do that. So there must there must be something about me and us that he knows that we should go and share the gospel. And I believe it's to keep us connected to him. Yeah. yeah. You know? I think 
I think it's partially, you know, it's for the same reason that he came, he came, he came, he came down and died as a human. You know, he didn't die mm. as God. It's it's evidence of God's power in, you know, in in the lives of those he's trying to save. Mm. So, you know, if if an angel who's never sinned comes to me and says, You can be saved, you know, if you, you know, listen to God, it's like, man, but you don't you don't know my struggles. Uh, mm. you don't know, you know, you don't know what I've been through, but you know, Jesus knows what you've been through because he went through it. I know, you know, similar to what other people have gone through because I go through similar experiences mm. and, and, and I can still attest to the, to the power of Christ in my life. Mm. And I think too is, um, <clears throat> I was a captive of sin. Sin had me and it had me shackled down, tied down a slave to sin and Jesus came and rescued me and I'm free and I see the filth from which I came and I see the glory ahead of me that he has promised me so I can't help but tell others because mm. he's slowly changing my heart to his heart mm -hmm. and um Jesus isn't willing that any should perish so when I see someone going down that slippery slope that I went down, mm -hmm. I'll say, hey, no, you don't have to do that. Satan is a liar and the father of lies. There is no light at the end of that dark tunnel you're going down. This is the way. This is the way. Yes. You know? if, and if, so, it's, if it's light, it's a train. <laughs> if, if it's a light, it's the fires waiting to burn you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so you you can't help but tell you can't help but tell especially you know it it came it was even more evident to me during the shelter in place for covid so many people were hopeless hmm. so many people didn't see a future <clears throat> but i could tell them you know because of my relationship with christ no matter what the government said or COVID said, I know who held the future. I had no fear. I didn't need toilet paper. You know, God, God had everything for me. So I had no fear and I could tell them why, why I wasn't worrying and um, going into deep depression. Mm. You know, God, God has a hold of the future and he has, he has promises. So yeah. I do not fear anything that comes ahead of me. Amen. You know? Amen. And, and you true. can't help but tell people about that when, when you've been ransomed, when you've been ransomed. So that's mm. why we, we share, we go forward and mm. we tell others and we give them. And the thing about it is the good news isn't like a treasure, a treasure box, mm -hmm. you know, it only has so much that you could take out from it and then there is no more. Mm. It's a fountain that's, mm, that's ever point. flowing. So mm. no matter how much I take to give to someone, there is still more to give to people. So I'm not mm. afraid to, to share and tell them about Jesus because it's going to take away from my blessing. In telling them and about Jesus gives me even more blessings. Not that I'm doing it for the blessing, but mm -hmm. it is a blessing. Okay, so we're we're almost coming to the end of our time. So who would like to read Acts chapter one verses one through eight? I'll do I'm that. sorry, Acts chapter one eight, and then and who would like to read Matthew chapter twenty four fourteen? This kind of rolls into Wednesday's lesson, and it talks about us uh, as, as Seventh Day Adventists being a mission movement. Makes sense. Who would like to read Acts chapter Acts mm. chapter one verse eight? All right. Uh... I'll, yeah, I'll do that. Um, okay. I'm gonna In start. Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. I'll take I'll that. Right. Okay, who, Lynn, you want to take it? Go ahead. Uh, oh. Acts 1. Okay. Yeah, I'll do Matthew. All right. Acts 1, um, uh, start of 7. And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons for which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto both uh, me, uh, un, uh, you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the utmost parts of the earth. Mm. 
Matthew okay. chapter 24, and, um, verse 14. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So what similarities do we see in these verses? Nothing could hold us back. Okay, nothing can hold us back. Yes, Sister Lynette. Yeah, I was just going to say the 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 good news is supposed to go throughout the entire world. Mm hmm. But I like. Go ahead. Somebody's going to say something. I was I was I was just going to note that you know it it was it was supposed to go to the world before, but you know the the Israelites kind of messed that up. So mm -hmm. it's it's our job to make sure that we don't we don't you know make the same mistake that they made and and uh, and kind of crunch onto it ourselves and and think it's only for us mm. well I, and i like what jesus said here he goes he said jerusalem then judea now remember samaria those were their enemies at the time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so this message is supposed to go to our enemies the co-workers the supervisor the person you don't like like you know the, the neighbors who have the kids that are destroying your rose bushes you know, they're supposed to go, even the kids need to hear it, right? That's right. And then it goes, and then this is what is interesting, because it's the first time I realized, I've read this how many times, hundreds of times, and this yeah. is even to the, to the remotest part of the earth. Yeah. And so you see that Jesus had a plan, and he was telling these disciples, these men, think about it, just these 11, these 11 men at the time, like, this has to go everywhere. 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 And guess what? When we look at it from that perspective, how should how should we re how should we reorient our lives? Because guess what? Everywhere includes your workplace. Everywhere yeah. includes your home. Everywhere includes your friend's home. Everywhere includes the okay. people that you come in contact with, praying for an opportunity to share the gospel. Talk about what Jesus Christ has done for you and what he can do for other people and what he can do for you. And having and having those opportunities to share his word. I think to me that's that's always a challenge and also but a good challenge in terms of thinking thinking about my life as we're all missionaries right we just have different mission fields and I think that's right. our mindset has to change a missionary can't just be like sister Mary Lou said oh this person that gets on a plane or gets on a boat or goes somewhere else to preach the gospel but no we're all missionaries you know we're all missionaries we just have different mission fields yes sister Lynette um, I no, was, I was just agreeing with you. That that's the, what were you saying, Sister Heather? No, so I was saying that um, th this transformation should be such an integral part of our life. It should um, dictate everything we do. It should be. It should guide everything that we say, everything that we do, so that people getting in contact with us will know that we are Christians. Mm. You know, we wouldn't say like the politicians that. Um, when I get into office, the fact that I'm a Seventh-day Adventist wouldn't impinge upon my rule makings, upon the way I um, make decisions. You know, it's because I'm a Seventh-day Adventist, it okay. impacts every single decision I make because, I, well, not necessarily a Seventh-day Adventist, because I'm a Christian who is a Seventh-day Adventist, that impacts everything I do and every decision I make. So, my mission field is everywhere I go at all times. Mm. Mm. Well, we, we've come to a, a, a wonderful stopping point. Uh, does anybody, who wants to close with prayer? Okay, yes, yeah, Sister Mary Lou, go ahead. Okay, I would love to. Go ahead. Uh, let's bow our heads together. Oh Lord, it has been a very big blessing for us to be able to share your word uh, amongst ourselves, hoping that people are watching, that something that they've heard tonight, this morning, can bless them, can help them to realize uh, things they didn't really understand, maybe um, were questioning in their hearts to know, was this meant for me? Is this a gospel that will be for all eternity? I pray, Lord, that you would bless our efforts to go outside of ourselves, to share this everlasting gospel with anyone who is willing to hear 
give us hearts to recognize when people are in need of our patience and our love, our kind look, um, an arm around a shoulder, um, whatever it might take, Lord, and help us to be willing always to do what we can do, to be representative of your love in your look, in your words, in your wanting us to go, Lord. I pray that each one of us will go outside of ourselves, wherever that may take us, in mm -hmm. our homes, to our children, to our family, to our church members, to our neighbors. And we just pray all of this and we thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Happy Sabbath.